Hello friends, welcome to Devotionables, Brief Devotions for Busy People. I'm Tim Amix. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm a member here at Ninth and O Baptist. I am uh, the director for our Intermediate Couples 1 BFG. So thank you for joining us today. Hopefully you've had the opportunity to read along with us congregationally as we do our FS2 260 Bible plan. Um, and if so, you know that we've been kind of rooted and anchored in the books of 1st and 2nd Kings. And I love the books of 1st and 2nd Kings because they're historical counts of what's taken place for the Israelites since they've come out of slavery in Egypt. And if you're familiar, if you've been reading along, you know that the Israelites have not been faithful to God. We've, we've read about the different kings who have taken over. We've seen the kingdom split between the northern and the southern kingdom. And, and different kings have been set up and, and um, they have not been faithful to God overall. And because of that, we saw last week that, or yesterday, that the northern kingdom has actually fallen now to the kingdom of Assyria. And in verse 7 of chapter 17 of 2 Kings, it says this, It occurred because the people of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods. And so because of the disobedience of the Israelites and the northern kingdom specifically, God is a just God. And God will not allow sin to go unpunished. He's been graceful. He's been merciful for so many years, hundreds of years even. And now the chickens have come home to roost for the northern kingdom. So how does that fare for the southern kingdom? Well, we've kind of split our time and we've seen that God has sent prophets and he's warned the people of what is coming for the northern and southern kingdoms. But what does that mean for the southern kingdom? How are they faring now, the kingdom of Judah? Um, they're coming off the reign of Ahaz, who was one of the worst kings, so it doesn't bode well as we come into the story in chapter 18. Ahaz was probably, if not the most wicked king recorded in the scripture. He did things that were abominable. He led the people in the worship of other gods. Um, but coming from him, his son Hezekiah now reigns in chapter 18. And the Bible tells us this about Hezekiah, and this may be a surprise. It says, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that David, his father, had done. He removed the high places and broke the pillars and cut down the Asherah. And he broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days, the people of Israel had made offerings to it. He trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel, so that there was none like him among all the kings of Judah after him, nor among those who were before him. So very interesting. Despite the fact that his father was a wicked king, Hezekiah has made a turn. And not only is Hezekiah a king who did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, he was a king who was able to do something that none of the other kings we read about have been able to do. He took down the high places. That's an incredible feat. Even the good kings that we've read about, there was always a but that followed those kings. But Hezekiah was able to take down the high places. You know, I often, I mentioned that I like the book of Kings and the, the historical account of it. And I often think, what if I was one of those kings? Or what if there were a book written about my life? And I can't think of a higher honor than if I were to be written about in the same way that Hezekiah was written about. And for you, believer... I hope that's your desire, that you would live a life like Hezekiah. Paul put it this way. Paul said in, in Romans 12, Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. And Hezekiah went all out for the Lord. He did things that no one else could do because he was sold out for Christ. He did what was pleasing to the Lord and what was right in the eyes of the Lord. And so for you, believer, that's my prayer for you, that if there's a story written of your life, that you would be challenged to, to live like Hezekiah, to be brave, and to live a life doing what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Be blessed.